we continue the series of self-paced videos for Module 2, Overcoming Fears and Limiting Beliefs with Resilience. Coming back to our guiding metaphor, the idea of surfing the waves, we can see resilience as the surfboard leash, providing surfers with an anchoring point during challenging times, helping them to quickly recover and get back on their feet after a wipeout or a fall, while still allowing them to move freely and adapt to changing wave conditions, always acting as a safety net, providing support and reassurance. Wouldn't you want to find out which are those skills which make a surfer ready to take face on a challenge like the one to ride the famously dangerous waves of Nazaré, Portugal? Let's dive again into the ocean, into waves of apprehendable size and keeping our safety net at hand. In this second video, we're going to cover resilience as the ability to continue to ride the waves through both sunny and stormy weather, through intense winds and wipeouts, through strong currents, choppy waters or big waves, through sore muscles or buzzing energy levels. To keep on showing up, no matter how many times water wipes you off your board, the same way entrepreneurs keep showing up and trying their best to navigate their business through challenging environments day in and day out. We'll start with what is resilience and why is it important, moving forward towards which are its six domains, then working on an action that will allow you to know if you are resilient enough. Next, we'll be covering what to be aware of when it comes to resilience and close with learning how to build resilience by challenging and reframing negative thoughts and limiting beliefs. We will use a technique called ABCDE for this. Let's dip our toes in the ocean, shall we? Maybe you heard about resilience, maybe you didn't yet. Even if the term is grandiose, I'm sure that you already possess some of the skills involved, as you are already surfing your own waves in life. Let's proceed to shedding more light onto this concept. Resilience refers to both the process and the outcome of successfully adapting to difficult or challenging life experiences, according to a definition from the American Psychological Association, APA. It's important to know that being resilient requires a set of skills, behaviors, and beliefs that you can work on and grow over time. Building resilience takes time, strength, and help from people around you. You'll likely experience setbacks along the way, but don't give up. Being resilient does not mean that people don't experience stress, emotional roller coasters, or suffering. Demonstrating resilience actually includes working through emotional pain and suffering so you can cope with a crisis. It doesn't mean you can skip it, but that you bounce back quickly from it. Resilience is having the mental strength to maintain a positive outlook, the emotional agility to navigate difficult emotions, and the behavioral flexibility to respond effectively to various situations. It is important because it's needed to process and overcome hardship or simply to advance through adversity. Those lacking resilience get easily overwhelmed and may turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms, while resilient people tap into their strengths and support systems to overcome challenges and work through problems. All of these are lenses through which we can see the concept of resilience. Our module two is called Overcoming Fears and Limiting Beliefs because resilience is one way of doing just that gaining or practicing skills of flexibility and adaptation to what life throws our way, or in our metaphorical case, to what Mother Ocean throws our way. But in order to know what it is to be done, we must first explore what is resilience made of. We could divide resilience into six domains, vision, composure, reasoning, help, tenacity, and collaboration. Let's see the intricacies of each. Vision is maybe the most important of the domains because it's about your sense of purpose, goals, and personal vision for yourself. Having clarity in this domain allows you to be decisive when facing tough choices and to maintain perspective when facing challenges, because clarity keeps you focused, and congruence is the name of the game, so that all your actions are aligned and working together across your larger vision and your sense of purpose. Composure is about regulating emotions, about being able to overcome that instinctive emotional response and maintain your calm and control, which often brings being able to recognize hidden opportunities and solve problems in new ways. It's not only about the big crises we face, but also about little things, the day-to-day, -day, 
like getting emotional in a traffic jam. It is never useful, so why bother? Remain in control and save your energy for what's important. Reasoning, in particular creativity and innovative problem solving, is incredibly useful when faced with challenges. It's not only about applying critical thinking during a crisis, but also about taking action ahead to prevent and plan how to avoid this crisis, like going to the dentist regularly so you don't end up having a dental implant. Find those resources like information, tools, techniques, and people available to you to help solve problems effectively and efficiently. Tenacity is key to long-term success, especially through persistence. Einstein pointed out the importance of persistence for success when he said, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with the problems longer. You should not only work hard and smart, but also stay with the problem until you achieve what you set out for. And because we rarely do things right the first times and mistakes creep in everywhere, it's important how we react to mistakes. Bounce back quickly, keep focus on your motivation and learn from mistakes while keeping a realistic optimism. Collaboration as a domain of resilience focuses on the fact that we are social beings and our brain has a deep fundamental need for connection with others. We are, after all, in this together, so we need to focus not just on us, but on the communities around us as well. Support and be supported. This is the key idea. In such an interconnected world, we rarely can achieve something strictly by ourselves, so it's crucial to build support networks that can act as perceived and per se safety nets when we need them, and become safety nets for others as well. The foundational domain is health, good health, means looking after your body through what you eat, through the exercise you do, through the quality of the sleep you get. Pay attention to what you eat because it affects your brain health, your mental performance, and your brain's ability to be plastic and adapt. Pay attention to how you exercise because it increases mental performance and your ability to learn. Pay attention to the quality of your sleep as your daily reset button to restart you and your day from your best setting possible. And that makes six. You may believe that you already possess some or most of the abilities mentioned before, but going out there in the open without actually being properly equipped to survive, it's not the smartest thing to do, is it? At least know what you don't know, as they say. Know what is exactly your ability to withstand adversity and come out on the other side unharmed. How true is it that you will be able to act as an entrepreneur when the environment will ask for it? So let's find out together how to know if you are resilient enough. And if you're looking for more inspiration, we suggest a short video with the world's Guinness record on riding the highest wave of 26 meters in Nazaré, Portugal. For sure, you will love it. Grab the video link from your working journal. If you want to know if you're resilient enough, we propose to you a self-evaluation technique, which we adapted from the Wheel of Life coaching exercise. You'll find it in your working journal at a readable size too. We have assigned eight types of abilities you should have as an entrepreneur in order to make it through to the other side of the storm while in the open sea. Take each one and give yourself a grade from 1 to 10, as you see in the measuring scale in the picture. Then connect the dots and see where you are now. What's great about resilience and disabilities is you absolutely have the capacity to build and improve every domain and therefore develop your own resilience. Resilience is a lifelong and ongoing journey for each one, and your effort here improves quality of life and directly contributes to the achievement of all your goals. So grab a different color and set the dots of where you want to be in the future. Connect the dots again and see where that takes you. Proceed to writing one or two actions for each improvement area to help you achieve that particular goal. And if you feel stuck or lost the sea, you can ask for a one-to-one -one session with a coach presenting this topic as the one you wish to work upon. We're sure that together we'll discover how to get you to the next level of resilience and your support network score will improve implicitly, right? When considering what to be aware of in regard to resilience, here are some thoughts. Resilience does not mean suppressing emotions or denying their existence. Acknowledge and process your feelings to effectively cope with challenges. While resilience involves adaptability, be mindful not to overextend yourself. Set realistic boundaries and prioritize self-care to avoid burnout. Don't compare yourself to others. 
Each individual's resilience journey is unique. Avoid comparing your progress to others, as it may lead to unnecessary self-criticism or feelings of inadequacy, which means you could circle back to the limiting beliefs we just escaped from earlier. Guard yourself against perfectionism. Strive for progress, not perfection. Resilience allows for learning from failures and setbacks, so embrace imperfections as part of the growth process. After all, you don't need to be the best from the beginning, but only be good enough to allow yourself to learn on the way there. It is perfectly okay to know your limits and to decide when enough resilience is enough. Watch yourself for signs of physical or emotional exhaustion, as resilience can be tested during prolonged periods of stress. If you find them, you don't need to be alone, remember. Seek support if needed and rely to your network of people available to you. You do want to get better and better at surfing, don't you? Then you need to build more of this resilience we're talking about. Let's start crafting together a surfboard leash that would keep you from harm's way and help you get back on your feet quickly when waves of challenges arise in front of you. We propose action number two, how to build resilience using the technique called ABCDE of emotions by Dr. Albert Ellis. Grab that pen and paper and write down these five questions. Then take it as food for thought and answer each one thoroughly in your working journal. How to build resilience with ABCDE method. This method comes from Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy, or REBT, and stands for Adversity, Beliefs, Consequences, Disputation, and Energization. Step 1. Adversity. Identify the specific adversity or challenging situation that you are facing. It could be a setback, a failure, or any obstacle that is causing distress. Step 2. Ask yourself, what am I telling myself about this challenge? Examine the beliefs and thoughts that arise in response to the adversity. Identify any negative or limiting beliefs that may be contributing to feelings of helplessness or hopelessness. Step 3. Continue and ask yourself. How do I react, behave, and feel to this? Explore the emotional and behavioral consequences of these beliefs. Understand how these beliefs are impacting your mood, your behavior, and overall well-being. Step 4. Start working on disputing the limiting beliefs. Ask yourself about the evidence you have about those negative thoughts being true while looking for more rational and constructive perspectives. Step 5. Finally, energize yourself with new, empowering beliefs and thoughts. Replace negative beliefs with positive, resilient, and self-affirming beliefs to navigate challenges effectively. So what do you say? Do you want to try this tool and see if it helps you build increased resilience? We end this video by saying, Calm seas never made a skilled sailor. This quote by Franklin D. Roosevelt emphasizes that facing challenges and overcoming difficult situations is what helps individuals develop their skills and resilience. Just as rough waters test a sailor's abilities, encountering adversity in life allows individuals to grow, learn, and become stronger in navigating life's journey. In the end, resilience is the art of navigating life's storms with unwavering courage, emerging stronger and more steadfast with every crashing waves. See you in our next video about strategies to build self-confidence.